the topic taken for today is biodiversity and conservation part 1 biodiversity means existence of enormous variety of species or life on the planet earth the term biodiversity was popularized by the sociologist edward wilson the earth is home for a number of species including 20,000 species of ants, 3 lakh species of beetles, 28,000 species of fishes and 20,000 species of orchids. So in this way there is an enormous variety of species on the planet Earth. The biodiversity is not only seen at the species level, it is also seen at genetic level and also ecosystem level. If you take the <coughs> biodiversity at genetic level, there is a plant found in the Himalayan regions known as raw wolfia vomitaria. From the roots of this plant, one drug known as the serpin is extracted. This drug is used to is used to treat hypertension or high blood pressure. It is also used in treating many other ailments. If you take the concentration and potency of the drug in different varieties of this plant, it varies. That means the concentration of potency shows a lot of variation in different strains of Raulfia vomitaria plant. Then, if you take the rice, there are 50,000 strains of rice in the world. And among mangoes, there are 1,000 varieties. In this way, lot of biodiversity is seen at genetic level or DNA level. Coming to species diversity, if you take the amphibian species in the western ghats and eastern ghats of India, the amphibian species are more in number in the western ghats than in the eastern ghats. Then, coming to the ecological diversity, ecosystems are various types present all over the countries all over the world including India. These ecosystems include deserts, rainforests, mangroves, coral reefs, wetlands, estuaries, alpine meadows, etc. In this way, biodiversity is seen at many levels. Then, species present in India and on the earth. According to International Union for Conservation of Nature and Natural Resources or in abbreviated form it is known as IUCN. So according to IUCN 2004 estimates the plant and animal species discovered till now constitutes about 1.5 million. Then, <clears throat> inventories of many taxonomic groups is more complete in temperate countries than in tropical countries. See, in the tropical countries, species are more and many more and they are to be, they are yet to be discovered. But in the temperate countries, as the Species diversity is low, they are almost fully studied and accounted for. According to Robert May, the most conservative estimate of species on the earth is about 7 million. But other scientists estimate that this number is from 20 to 50 million. Then, Robert May also 
calculated that only 22% of the total species present on the earth are recorded till now. Then, among the species recorded, animals constitute 70% and plants constitute only 22%. Then, among the animals, the in insects, they constitute 70%. So, among the animal species, insect species constitute 70%. Then among the plants, fungal species equal more than the vertebrate species except the birds. In the book some charts are given. These are the invertebrate population or species. Among the invertebrates, insects occupy the major number. After insects come mollusks. Mollusks is the second largest group. Then crustaceans and all other remaining invertebrate animals constitute this much. If you take the vertebrates, 50% of the vertebrates are fishes. After the fishes, next the largest group is birds, then reptiles, then amphibians, mammals. Among the plants, angiosperms and the fungi they constitute the largest groups. They have largest number of species. Then come algae, lichens, mosses, ferns, etc. In this way, some animal or plant groups, animal and plant groups have high number of species and some have few number of species. Then you take up India, the land mass in India is only 2.4% of the entire land mass on this earth. But if you take into consideration the number of species present in India, they are about 8.1% of the total species present on that. That means, though India has lesser land area, it has high concentration or high density of species. So, India is rich in species. That's why India is considered as one of the mega diversities there are 12 mega diversities in the world and out of them india is one then in india <coughs> till now 45000 plant species and 90000 animal species are described and recorded and still 1 lakh plant species and 3 lakh animal species are yet to be discovered and accounted for. Then patterns of biodiversity. How the biodiversity is distributed? If you <coughs> study the distribution of species on that, there is a latitudinal gradient. Latitudes are the parallel lines drawn to the equator. Then, between the latitude at 23.5 degrees north and 23.5 degrees south, the area is known as the tropics. So, tropics spread from Tropic of, tropic of Cancer to Tropic of Capricorn. In this tropical region, species are found in large numbers. And as one moves from the equator to the poles, the species number gradually decreases. In the book, one example is given about the birds. There is a country known as Ecuador. It is a South American country located exactly on the equator. In the equator, there are 1400, 1400 species of birds. If we move north to, to New York, which is at 41 degrees north, only 
105 species of birds are found. If you move further, north towards North Pole, in the Greenland, which is at 71 degrees north, only 56 species of birds are found. So in this way, the availability of species gradually decreases from equator to the poles. In India, there are about 1200 species of birds. India is a tropical country and it is not exactly at the equator. Then, <clears throat> if you consider an equal area of a tropical forest and Midwest America, the species found in tropical forest will be 10 times more than the species found in the Midwest America. Then, the greatest biodiversity on earth is seen in the Amazon forest. Amazon forest is present in South America and it occupies mostly the tropical climate. The Amazon forest is a home for a number of animal and plant species. It is a home for 40,000 species of plants, 3,000 species of fishes, 1,300 species of birds, 427 species of mammals, and the same number of amphibians, 378 species of reptiles, and 1,25,000 species of invertebrates. Still, more than 2 million species of insects are yet to be discovered and accounted for in the Amazon region. In this way, Amazon is the richest source of <coughs> living species on the earth. Then, why the species richness is seen in the tropics and not in the temperate countries? Or, why the biodiversity is rich in the tropics? There are three reasons. The tropical countries are more stable, whereas the temperate countries are subjected to frequent climatic <coughs> processes like glaciation. So, the tropics accommodate more species than the temperate regions. Then, the environment is also stable and predictable in the case of tropics and it is unpredictable in the temperate regions. Then, in the tropics, more solar energy is available for the plants to synthesize the food. That's why, in the, trop in the temperate country, in the tropics, biodiversity is more because of availability of large amount of food and biomass. Because of the three reasons, biodiversity is rich in tropics than in temperate regions. Then we have to study one equation, species area relationship. Alexander von Humboldt, a German explorer and biologist, he surveyed South America much before Darwin. He counted the number of species available in South America and he found that as the area of exploration exploration increases as the area of exploration increases the number of species increases but it is only up to a level beyond that there is no increase in the number of species though a large area is explored if you draw a graph by taking into account the explored area and the number of fishes birds bats and angiosperms found in that area, we find uh, it forms a rectangular parabola like this. But on a logarithm, on a, on a logarithm scale, it forms a straight line. Then, only if it forms a straight line, we can calculate the distribution of species according to the area surveyed. 
this graph area is plotted on the x axis and the number of species are plotted on the y axis species area relationship it is a graph uh, it has an equation that equation is log s is equal to log c plus z log a here S represents the species richness, A represents the area, Z is the slope of the line or regression coefficient and C is the intercept of the slope. Slope means this one. <coughs> the Z values are calculated by scientists and they have found that usually the Z values for many species lie between 0.1 and 0.2. This generally, but if a large area like a continent is explored, the Z values increase from 0.6 to 1.2. If Z values are taken for fruit eating birds and mammals, the value is 1.15. In this way, Z values varies depending upon the amount of area explored for various types of species. Then, importance of species diversity to the ecosystem. Species play an important role in the stability of the ecosystem. Communities with more species are more stable and they can tolerate man-made disasters and recover quite fast and quite easily. Then, David Tillman, a scientist, conducted some experiments. He has grown plants indoor, indoors and, and, and he found that the amount of biomass produced year after year is more if there are more number of species. That means species richness contributes to increased amount of biomass and it results in the stability of the community. Such communities can survive easily and they can tolerate any type of disaster. Then, rich biodiversity is a must for any community, for its health or for any ecosystem and rich biodiversity is also essential for the very survival of human race. Then Paul Ehrlich, he proposed one theory known as vivid pauper hypothesis. Here he compares the ecosystem with the top an aeroplane. In the ecosystem, there are a large number of species. Similarly, an aeroplane has a large number of rivets joining different parts of the aeroplane. If a minor rivet is lost in an aeroplane, nothing happens. Suppose a rivet connecting the seat to the frame of the aircraft is lost, nothing happens. Still the aircraft can travel safely. But if a crucial rivet is lost or the critical rivet is lost, what happens? The aeroplane will crash land and it will be destroyed. Similarly, in, a, in an ecosystem, if some minor species is lost, nothing happens. Instead, if a critical species is lost in an ecosystem, the entire ecosystem collapses. That's why species richness is a must for the very survival of any ecosystem. Thank you.